talking about psyops um we've got this madness in it obviously most of you are aware of what boris johnson and his friends got up to during the first lockdown um you know news has come out that essentially they had a bring your own beers party because they wanted to celebrate i don't know the fact that they enforced some rules and again, it wouldn't be a big deal. It really wouldn't. But the fact that they were going so hard in the paint about people abiding by the rules and staying indoors, I think if I remember correctly, um, what's her name? The girl that Skeptors likes, what's her flipping name? Pretty Patel. I remember her coming on the news once and basically telling people, that, encouraging people to basically fob in their neighbours if they were having parties during the lockdown, during the first lockdown, which was really strict. People couldn't make sure to stay indoors, only non-essential, sorry, non-essential shops weren't open. So basically only supermarkets so you can get your supplies and whatnot. And even in those supermarkets, you had to wear a mask, you had to stand two metres apart. I remember that was the time when to go into a supermarket, there'd be a queue outside like a Disneyland where you'd kind of be sneaking around. You had to stand two metres apart, even outside, wearing your mask, sweating your balls off, just waiting to get some eggs and some spinach to kind of chill. Like, oh, I hated it, hated it, hated it. Um, and during that whole time, these guys were having drinks, be, you know, behind closed doors. Bring your own beers, of course, because the pubs and the bars were closed. Absolutely shocking state of affairs. And again, it's not big of an issue, but because it went so in a hard in a pain for us, you'd imagine it'd be a little bit of um, shame attached to this, right? But there wasn't, obviously, but surprisingly so, which to me anyway, because Boris Johnson is known and the Conservatives are kind of notorious for never apologising for anything that they do, which is an interesting approach, isn't it? Because I think when you're being cancelled as a celebrity, I think you should most likely, yeah, if you're being cancelled as a celebrity, unless it's something heinous, like a crime that you've been flipping punished for in a court of law, you should probably not apologise because if anything, you are giving your um, enemies and people that don't like you um a glimpse that you have a chink in your armor and once they see you kind of bow down and kiss the ring once um or but yeah basically they're they're never going to stop coming after you so you just have to kind of take the jk rowling approach where you just keep going and going and going and going and just hope that these detractors and people that don't like you despite them loving your work are going to eventually give up that's basically what you got to do but obviously if you're a politician you can't do that because essentially people have put you in power to basically um you know have their best interests at heart right in terms of the policies that you put in place and whatnot and just in terms of leadership you would imagine it's the same thing that people are arguing about the whole you know cummings thing when he got caught lips in that girl behind the door it's not the fact that you lips in her it's just more so leadership you can't be telling people not to mix and stuff and here you are having an affair and bonking behind closed doors you can't be doing that same thing with boris if you're the leader of this country and you you know fell short of abiding by the rules yourself during the peak again this is not the this is not like last month or a couple of months ago this is at the peak of the pandemic in may and if you were remembering correctly right this is a list that tells you actually breaks it down this is from the house of commons library and it says the following this is what happened during the first lockdown right a breakdown of the whole lockdowns the first lockdown happened in march to what well, happened in march 2020 then it went on to june and this is how it went down it says England was the England was in national lockdown between late March and June 2020. Initially, all non-essential high street businesses were closed and people were ordered to stay at home, permitted to leave for essential purposes only, such as buying food or for medical reasons. And I remember at that time, this is when like police cars were like patrolling the streets of London, not obviously stopping anybody, but still just letting their presence be known that you can't be outside unless you're doing these kind of things. It continues. Starting in May 2020, the laws were slowly relaxed. People were permitted to leave the home for outdoor recreation. Again, it's not outdoor because they're in side number 10 having BYOB drinks beyond exercise from May 13th on the 1st of June restrictions on leaving the home was relaxed sorry was replaced with a requirement to be at home overnight and people weren't permitted to meet outside in groups of up to six but outside in groups of six and of course that garden party does way more than six people so it was really strict around that time so for him to you know do what he did is just Oh, horrible um so it says the following you obviously apologize so let's quickly play his apology and then we're going to play, play what Keir Starmer said because I think he absolutely ripped into him which was really great to see but again surprising to see him apologize but again he probably didn't have any other option you know what I mean let's see what boys has to say here come on Boris tell us tell us you're sorry mate tell us you're sorry Mr Speaker I want to apologize I know that millions of people across this country have made extraordinary sacrifices over the last 18 months. I know the anguish that they have been through, unable to mourn their relatives, unable to live their lives as they want or to do the things 
they love. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. And though I cannot anticipate the conclusions of the current inquiry, I have learned enough to know that there were things we simply did not get right. And I must take responsibility. Number 10 is a big department with the gardeners as an extension of the office. The gardeners. Which has been in constant use because of the role of fresh air in stopping the virus. And when I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May 2020 to thank groups of staff before going back into my office 25 minutes later to continue working, I believed implicitly that this was a work event. But, Mr. Speaker, with hindsight, I should have sent he didn't know everyone back party. inside. He didn't know. I should have found some other way to thank them. And I should have recognised that even if it could be said technically to fall within the guidance, there would be millions and millions of people who simply would not see it that way. People who suffered terribly, people who were forbidden from meeting loved ones at all, inside or outside. And to them and to this House, I offer my heartfelt apologies. And all I ask is that Sue Gray be allowed to complete her inquiry into that day and several others so that the full facts can be established. And I would did he say, I'm sorry, or did he say, I apologise? That's an interesting turn of phrase, isn't it? Offers an apology, but he didn't say, I'm sorry. He said, I apologise. Hmm. But anyway, Keir Starmer ripped into him. Obviously, the Labour leader who, to be honest, hasn't had the best... How do you say this? He hasn't necessarily done... He hasn't necessarily capitalised on Boris Johnson's mishaps and shortcomings. He's been a little bit limp-wristed and lacking in conviction. And there's not real, he's not real, real, there's not real opposition, really, it feels like, when it comes to Labour. I don't really feel as if there is. Um, they haven't really done a good way. And they haven't really done anything. They haven't really marketed themselves well in terms of being the alternative um, to the Conservatives at the moment. It just seems like the Conservative Party are on the flipping one-way road to just damaging and ruining themselves through just pure incompetence. You know I mean, it's not as if like the Labour Party are doing anything amazing to make them look dumb or to expose how you know ill-equipped they are to lead the country. It's just the Conservatives are just kind of you know. Um, like I was in the past. They just can't get out of their own way, mate. They just can't get out of their own way. So anyway, it's just Keir Starmer has some very choice words to say to Boris. And for once, this actually sound, he, for once he actually sounded um, somewhat competent. And I guess more so it came from his annoyance, right? It, it felt like he was actually annoyed. It didn't feel like he generated this flipping, um, you know, rebuttal from some guy on Fiverr or something. He actually said this from the heart because he actually felt this way so this is Keir Starmer's retort to Boris Johnson's quote-unquote apology which really wasn't an apology because I didn't hear his words I'm sorry in case I forgot I didn't really hear I'm sorry there but let's hear what Keir Starmer has to say and how he interpreted Boris Johnson's apology well there we have it after months of deceit and deception yeah. the pathetic spectacle of a man who's run out of road <laughs> his defense his defense that he didn't realise he was at a party. <laughs> it, it, it is so ridiculous that it's actually offensive to the British public. He's finally been forced to admit what everyone knew, that when the whole country was locked down, he was hosting boozy parties in Downing Street. Yes. Is he now boozy. going to do the decent thing and resign? Yes. But yeah, I forget his response. But yeah, I thought Keir Starmer handled that pretty well. So let's see what happens. Um, I think just to end on this anyway, when it comes to politics, I think I've always had real delusions of grandeur when it comes to my career, when it comes to my potential, when it comes to my ability, when it comes to my future prospects. I believe deep down that I'm destined to be rich and famous. I don't know which way, which avenue, but I believe it in my soul, in my bones. I've always have since I was young, since I was a kid, since he was a baby. I've always kind of known I was special and I had something about me that I had to kind of share with the world, whatever way it was. I don't know what, how it's going to be presented, but I know I do have something in me so special. <laughs> but 
one of the main reasons why I've always been really confident, especially when it comes to jobs, because I've had a lot of people, because I've had a lot of jobs, right? I've had a lot of things I've bounced around in, some of them because, you know, I've been told to kick rocks and some of them because I've just got itchy feet and fuck it and just decided to go somewhere else. And I guess in the kind of area, in in the kind of industry that I work in, maybe moving around too often isn't necessarily the greatest thing. And sometimes staying in a place and maybe working your way up or getting promotions is a good way to kind of hack your way up the kind of earning ladder you know quote unquote but i've never been satisfied with it because i didn't necessarily ever see myself working forever for somebody else i already saw myself kind of doing my own thing quote unquote but one of the reasons why i've always had this real sense of you know delusions of grandeur if you want to call it that has to do with politics because quite quickly in my life, when I kind of figured out or I learned, especially when it comes to UK politics, that, like, you know, most of these politicians go to Eton, they go to Oxford and Cambridge, you know, they have really, you know, privileged backgrounds, they grow up in amazing areas, they have a great groups of friends, their parents are connected to this person and that person, they have all the advantages in life that would basically allow them to basically get not get anything they want, but it put them in a position where they can have access to things that the everyday person on the street can't have access to. And I think when you get older, you start to realize it a lot, right? You start to realize that life isn't always about what you know and what you're good at. It's sometimes also about who you know, right? Um, it's, it's annoying. It's obviously frustrating for people that are on the outside or if you live in the middle of nowhere, it's annoying to kind of realize that sometimes you need to be in and amongst the action and friends with he or she in order for you to ascend and kind of progress in your career. But fundamentally, in terms of the brush tax, in terms of the foundation of it, these people that we're seeing on TV, these people that are supposed to be meant to be leading us, they're no better than you or I. So when I go into jobs or I'm applying for roles that are way above my flipping pay grade or way above my le level of competence via my CV, because I think I could do everything, but my CV obviously will tell people that, oh, maybe you're not, um, you're not eligible for this job. You don't have the requirements needed to, to kind of do this job on paper. But the reason why I apply for it regardless is because I'm like, hey, if Boris Johnson can lead this country, if Boris Lawrence Johnson could be the person everyone appoints or votes for to be the guy that's going to lead us, right? That That is the, the biggest job in the country, basically, right? That is the CEOs of all CEOs in this country. And he is, you know, legit, he's like legitimately maybe, not, I wouldn't say slow, but his comprehension levels aren't the, aren't the best. Um, you know, he doesn't have the widest range of vocabulary. Um, he seems differing again maybe it's a little bit of an act that he does to kind of you know put to disarm people but in general he's not the greatest leader in the world he's not very good at his job so when i see politicians do it i'm like i shouldn't be afraid to apply for a fucking marketing job somewhere uh, or for like a you know social media manager whatever it may be i want to apply for why should i be worried and afraid to apply for these jobs if these guys are able to do what they're doing on that level and basically get paid no and basically have a job for life because especially essentially when you're an mp you don't have to work a normal job again for your the entirety of your life and you basically have a job until the day you die and a pretty fat pension and you obviously have the opportunity to obviously bring in people that you want to bring in but I don't know politicians always give me hope they really do because they're so bad at their job i think to myself it's impossible that i could be worse than that it really is impossible so let's see what happens most likely nothing will happen he'll just kind of sliver away of it as he always does um escaping all consequence but i think he's kind of been um boris has kind of got a bit of a it's kind of got a bit of a luck on this because i think it's been so far it's so, so much time has passed since the first lockdown and people have basically done, even myself, I've done a lot in my life so far from the first lockdown to now to try and forget about the horrors of early 2001 or mid 2001. You know, you do so many things so that you can kind of um, make up for lost time and also kind of delete all those painful experiences. And even when you go through something painful, when you, even when you go through painful experiences anyway, I know I do. I would usually bury all the trauma deep down inside my psyche so I don't have to revisit it or address it in any way, shape or form. So I'm sure that has played into the fact that people aren't as outraged as you would expect them to be. It doesn't feel like, especially on social, especially in the news, I don't really see real vitriol because I think people are just trying to carry on and get on with their lives. They don't necessarily care as much. But I think just in terms of ethics and principles, this should just be punished just for the sake of it. It should be, not for the sake of it, just, just, just to send a message. You can't be leading the country saying one thing and then doing the other yourself. Like, you just can't. That's just to be grounds for immediate sacking do you know what i mean but life doesn't work like that when you're politicians you get you know somehow these guys have a completely different different set of rules they have to basically abide by 